What's going on guys, Super Savager 789 here, bringing you guys another video, and today we're doing what if Ash was born in Gala. So in this timeline, obviously, Ash is born in Gala instead of Kanto. In the anime, we don't actually get an official Gala anime, and only see sprinkles of it, so we're going to have to take some artistic liberties. So what I'll be doing here is adapting the game and making it into an anime storyline. So if there is some timeline discrepancies between this and Journeys, chalk it up to the fact that the timeline is simply different, I'm going to be a lot more creative with this one, and it's going to be a lot more my own story. If you guys don't like these kinds of what-ifs, and prefer more grounded stuff, then I completely understand. I recommend you watch my other series, but for those who like the more crazy creative side, this one is definitely for you, so buckle up. And without further ado, let's just hop straight into the what-if. Ash Ketchum would be born in the quiet town known as Postwick. At the age of four, Ash would be playing outside of a ball, when a bunch of other kids start to pick on him. They push him down and go take his ball. Before they can though, another boy's age runs in the way telling them to leave him alone. While they aren't intimidated, they do oblige and walk away. The boy turns around and offers Ash a hand up, introducing himself as Go. After this, the duo become best friends, growing up together as if they were brothers. Speaking of brothers, Go would introduce Ash to his brother, being Leon. Both boys are impressed by Leon's mere presence, especially when they see his Pokemon. Watching him battle inspires both boys for various reasons. Go enjoys seeing all the various Pokemon, and wonders how many there truly is, making him dream about becoming an adventurer. As for Ash, seeing the strong bond between Leon and his Pokemon being demonstrated in the depths of battle makes Ash inspired, especially when Leon becomes the champion. Leon would return home shortly after he becomes champion, where Go and Ash both meet up with him. Go would give his brother a big hug with a smile on his face, while Ash hangs back, he looks Leon in the eyes with a sense of determination flowing over him. He points at Leon and tells him that he'd better train every day because when Ash gets his first Pokemon, he'll come challenge him and become a Pokemon master. That makes Leon smile as he tells Ash he'll be waiting for that day. Eventually, Ash and Go would both eventually turn 10 years old, but they begin to prepare to set out on their adventure. Ash would be sound asleep in his bed when a loud banging at the door wakes him up. He rushes out of bed and finds Go there, super energetic as he greets his friend. He tells Ash to get dressed as today is the day. Leon is coming home with Pokemon for some trainers to begin their adventure. Upon realizing that he's going to be late, Ash quickly rushes upstairs and puts his clothes on. When he comes outside, he sees Go down the street in the exact opposite direction to his house. He runs over, asking him what he's doing. Go points to the slumbering wield just outside the town, mentioning how something doesn't feel right. It feels like it's calling to him. Ash warns his friend that they've been told not to go there, but Go doesn't listen. He's just too headstrong to care. Following his adventure instincts, Go takes off running straight to the world. Being a good friend, Ash begins to follow him. The duo both enter the misty forest, losing sight of one another rather quickly as they walk down separate paths. As Go is walking, a Wulu appears from the bushes, beginning to stalk him through the mist. The moment Go catches on, he barely avoids the Pokemon headbutting him. He falls to the ground, crawling backwards as he stares up at the Mon. He tells it to stop, taking note of its broken horn. With rage in its eyes, it leaps at him again. Before it touches him though, it collides with something deep in the mist. Go can't quite make out what it is, but feels rather protected by its sheer presence. When the mist subsides, the creature that saved him had gone, leaving the Wulu running away. It looks back at Go, and the duo lock eyes before it leaves. Meanwhile, as Ash is looking, he makes out a humanoid figure in the mist. Believing it's Go, he runs over, shouting out to his friend, only to realize it's a Pokemon. A Pokemon he doesn't even recognize. It collapses soon after Ash arrives. Being the caring person he is, Ash runs over to it and tries to tend to it. From out of the nearby bushes, a bunch of Nicket begin to emerge, with their eyes set on the injured Pokemon. It's vulnerable, perfect for the taking. Ash would realize this and stands up trying to deter the Pokemon away from the injured creature behind him. He announces that if they want to attack anyone, it'll be him, because protecting everyone else is what a Pokemon Master does. Enraged by his speech, the Pokemon all lunge at him. Before they touch him though, the mist thickens and a mysterious Pokemon appears within. While Ash can't see it, it makes him feel strong and confident. Just as quick as it appeared, the Mon disappears in the mist, leaving all the Nicket knocked out from a single attack. Just then, Leon appears on his Charizard, accompanied by Go. Leon lands and asks if Ash is okay, but the boy isn't focused on him, telling Leon that they need to help the injured Pokemon behind him. Leon grabs it and hops on Charizard with Ash, flying them to the nearby lab located in Wedgehurt so he can help it. 
He reveals that his name is Cubfu, with both Ash and Go shocked that they never even heard of it. Of course, that makes sense, as they are quite rare, and not even native to this part of Gala. Go would then realize that they need to get their Pokemon, which makes Ash also shocked. At least they can both pick, though. That's when Leon reveals he only has one Pokemon left, making the duo both double over in shock. Leon takes him outside, leaving the Cubfu in the room. It quickly regains consciousness and runs to the window to watch what's happening down below. Leon would grab the Pokeball and throws out the remaining Pokemon, being Scorbunny. Scorbunny begins to bounce around, jumping off the fence as well as off the heads of Ash, Go, and Leon. Leon would ask who will be taking this Mon with Ash telling Go to take it. It reminds him of Go anyway. Go is shocked by Ash's selflessness, as is Cubfu. He then asks Ash what he's going to do, since he won't have a Pokemon. Before Ash can answer though, Cubfu leaps from the window and lands on Ash's shoulder. Leon smiles, telling Ash that he's got a Pokemon after all. Ash would ask Cubfu if he wants to tag along, and Cubfu agrees. So Ash adds Cubfu to his team, and Go adds Scorbunny to his. Just then, a woman walks out of the lab remarking that Leon has got quite the protégés. Sonya and Yampa walk out where Leon introduces her to the duo. She reveals that she's quite the historian as well as how she was once Leon's rival. She then hands Go and Ash Pokedexes, telling them to use this to learn about Pokemon. This is rather ideal for Go, as he wants to know everything he can. He asks Sonya about the Pokemon that lives in the world, with Ash also mentioning how he met one as well. While she doesn't know, she promises to look into it. Leon would also recommend the gym challenge to Ash, who agrees that it is a good idea. He tells Leon that he and Cubfu will be sure to give him the battle of his life, with Leon grinning in anticipation. Leon would leave, and so Ash and Go head out to Wedgehurst to simply relax. They head to the Pokemon Center, where the duo are rather loud. This gets some attention from a girl who they are oblivious to. After healing up and eating a meal, the duo both head out the center. As they are walking on ahead to leave, they hear someone even louder than Go with a thick southern accent. The duo both look over and see a farmer laughing with all his friends. While they don't hear the start of the conversation, they definitely catch the end. The farmer laughs about how he sold its horn for 50000 but it ran away before he could get the other. Go would flash back to the Wooloo from within the world and puts two and two together. He goes over and begins to shout at the farmer for being so cruel to his Pokemon. How dare he treat his friend like that. The farmer laughs, stating how Pokemon aren't friends, but simply tools for people to benefit off. Both angry and saddened, Go would begin to run off, telling Ash he'll be back later. Ash doesn't get time to question him, and simply decides to head to their nearby route for some training while he waits for his friend. As him and Cubfu are moving, the duo would set their eyes on the Squilvert. Obviously, Ash wants to catch it, so he tells Cubfu to prepare to battle. Despite the type advantage, the Pokemon is able to get away. Ash and Cubfu are a bit upset by this. To make matters worse, a feminine voice calls him out on it. He turns and sees a girl holding a Morpeko. Ash introduces himself with the girl introducing herself as Marnie. She tells Ash that if he wants to be a good trainer, he should at least learn the basics. So she offers to teach him and Cubfu a thing or two. Marnie would teach Ash and Cubfu how to properly battle with a sparring match. While Cubfu loses, it does give Ash and Cubfu some useful experience. Ash would then take the advice she gave, and so he decides to go after another Pokemon. They find a wild Rookie D, and Ash decides to challenge it using Cubfu. Obviously, Marnie chastises him for attacking a Marnie's at a disadvantage against, but Ash and Cubfu are both confident. Thanks to their newfound synergy, they're able to weaken the bird, allowing Ash to throw a Pokeball at it. After the ball shakes a couple times, Ash successfully catches his first Pokemon. Just then though, their attention is drawn to some loudmouth people shouting loud as they move in synergy. Wearing Team Yell attire, they introduce themselves as Jesse and James. When they finish speaking, their Galarian Meowth screams loud. Marnie tells them to leave her alone, but they say no. Boss has orders after all. Ash shouts to stop harassing his friend, which makes Marnie blush. Obviously, they aren't interested with the twerp. Realizing they need to battle, James sends out his coughing, and Jesse sends out a Silicobra. So Marnie sends her Morpeko and Ash uses Cubfu. After a brief battle, Cubfu uses Rock Smash to knock them both in the air and lets Morpeko use his signature move to send Team Yell blasting off again. Ash asks what that was about and she says that their boss is a creep who keeps trying to get her. Meanwhile, Go and Scorbunny be looking around the forest where inevitably they find the Wooloo. It attacks them, wary of humans, but Scorbunny simply negates it using Quick Attack. Go tries to calm down Wooloo while it keeps attacking, using Scorbunny's attacks to simply fend off the Pokemon without hurting it. He reveals that he knows what happened to it, and that he's really sorry. 
He just wants to help it. Wulu is weary, but slowly begins to calm down. Go then moves in and hugs the Pokemon, making it tear up. The Wulu agrees to come with Go, so Go adds it to his team. Go then meets up with Ash and Mani, where he introduces himself. Ash and Go brief each other on the situation as Mani begins to leave. Ash asks where she's going, though. They are friends, and if she has nowhere else to go, why not come with them? Mani is taken aback by this comment. After thinking it over, though, and after asking more Peko, Mani would agree and begins to travel with Ash and Go, which is where we're going to leave off this part. If you guys enjoyed this what if, why not hit the like button and support the channel and let me know you want to see another part. If you guys are more of a fan of this creative style as opposed to the grounded one, then let me know. And if there's any Pokemon you think Ash and Go or Mani should add to their team, leave that down in the comment section down below and tell me why. If it's good enough, maybe I'll consider it. And so uh, yeah, bye!